Immaculate Co-Redemptrix, Queen of Martyrs, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today with the church, we honor the Korean martyrs who gave their lives for the kingdom of God. This feast day today names Andrew Kim Taegon, the first Korean priest and martyr, and Paul Chong Hasang, a lay apostle, and then companions uh, among the group honored today are 103 martyrs. And there were three bishops and seven priests among this group. They were not all martyred at one time, but over a period of years. But the, ma the majority then were laity. There were 47 women, 45 men from all stages of life, married and single and of all ages, from children to elderly. And they were canonized by Pope John Paul II in 1984. Christianity arrived in Korea in the early, let's see, that would be the late 17th, no, the late 16th century. Uh, it's believed then that the first contact that Korea had with Christianity came with an invasion in 1592. Uh, Japan invaded Korea, and among the Japanese uh, were some soldiers who had become Christians with the uh, missions that arrived in Japan years before. And so these Christian Japanese soldiers uh, baptized some Koreans, and that was the beginning of the church in Korea. But they didn't get a priest for over 200 years. Uh, somehow, the faith was spread uh, through this evangelization among the laity, and the baptisms were performed by the laity, and their faith was sustained miraculously without the sacraments other than baptism. From the very beginning, there were persecutions. Around uh, 1777, well, one of the reasons that no priest arrived is that Korea was a very closed country. They, they refused any interaction with the outside world except for one annual journey that they made to China to pay their taxes to the Emperor of China. And that's the only contact really that they allowed with the outside world. And it was on one of these occasions of one of these diplomatic missions uh, that some Christian literature was brought into Korea in 1777 that they obtained from the Jesuit missionaries in China. And then this literature led some of the educated Korean Christians to begin studying. Kim, St. Andrew Kim Taegon was the first native priest of Korea. He was uh, the son of some converts, Korean parents who converted to, Cori to Christianity his father, Ignatius Kim, was martyred then during the persecution of 1839, and he himself is beatified, was beatified in 1925. Andrew, at the age of 15, after his baptism, traveled 1,300 miles to go to the seminary in Macau, China, and he studied there for six years, after which he returned to his country and then once again crossed the Yellow Sea to go to Shanghai uh, that same year to become ordained as a priest. And then he returned again to Korea. 
when he was back in Korea, he, his task was to arrange to bring more missionaries secretly into Korea by a water route that would elude the border control. And he was arrested then uh, and, and, and tortured and finally beheaded uh, near the capital of, of, of Korea in Seoul in 1846. The lay apostle whose name is remembered on, in today's memorial, St. Paul Chung, was a married man and uh, 45 years old at the, at the time of his death. He appealed to the government and because of his appeal, Pope Gregory X sent more priests to Korea. St. Paul was martyred in 1839. The remarkable uh, growth of the church in Korea in just a, a short span of time, first over the period of, of 200 years without a priest, when the, when the first priest arrived, there were already 4,000 Catholics. And after the priest's arrival, this missionary from China, within less than 10 years, their numbers were more than doubled. Uh, seven years after his arrival, there were 10,000 Catholics. And today, there are approximately 4 million Catholics in Korea. And this remarkable growth undoubtedly uh, is the fruit of that ultimate gift that so many Christians in Korea paid for the faith. Uh, during the time of persecutions, which uh, was from well, the major persecutions were 1839 to 1867. And, but over the period of, of persecution, more than 10,000 Christians gave up their life for the faith. And the sacrifice, as the, as the fathers of the church uh, teach, the seed of the blood of martyrs is the seed of new Christians. And St. Andrew Kim Taigon, uh, this first priest of Korea and martyr, gives a beautiful uh, testimony to the supreme value of the faith uh, in this letter that we have and that's read during the Office of Readings today. He testifies then to the purpose for which we're created, which is to serve God. I mean, it, it all comes down to that, as we heard in the gospel, what, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world if he should lose or forfeit himself in the process? It profits absolutely nothing because we're not made for this world and whatever we could acquire in this life is of no value in eternal life. And so it's that fundamental perspective that allows the martyr to sacrifice this life for the life that never ends with Christ. St. Kim, Andrew Kim, Tagon, St. Paul, St. Paul, these martyrs in Korea, through the grace of God, understood this and were willing because of their great charity and love for the truth for Christ who died for them that they were willing to give up their life and today the church in Korea is one of the strongest uh, in the world where piety and reverence are the norm. We thank God for the gift of this faithful witness that has made that church so strong and we ask that in the times that come, if our country uh, be put to the test, that the church in America be equally generous and strong in faith uh, to assure fruits for 
the church of the future. May our blessed mother who sacrificed all for our sake and for the will of God inspire us to do the same. Praise be Jesus and Mary.